Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, I am your host, Winston Welch, and delighted you are joining us today for this session of Out and About, where each, every other week we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. So with that said, joining me in the studio today, I am especially delighted to have Sam Hawk and Renee Rumbler to talk about the wonderful and vital work of the Lavender Center and Clinic. Welcome to my show and thanks for being my guest today. Thank you for having us. So the Lavender Clinic, it's an amazing thing. I just want to read a very short thing here so that people can understand what we're going to talk about. But the Lavender Center and Clinic is a partnership uh, of an employee-owned and nonprofit healthcare center for all communities, and we'll discuss what all communities is in a minute, all genders, and LGBTQAI+, and we'll get to that alphabet in a minute, supportive <laughs> uh, uh, care, counseling services, support groups, um, HIV prevention and treatment, hormone therapy, youth programs, uh, and educational training on transgender and gender non-conforming health care. It's a mouthful, but the Lavender Clinic is the only yes. clinic in Hawaii that specializes in the mental, emotional, and physical well-being of the LGBTQI community with special emphasis on transgender health. Is that fairly accurate of what, what, what we're looking at? <laughs> yes. Yes, but uh, um, what's great is that there's more and more clinics now coming forward and offering more services mm -hmm. to the communities. Um, so it's, it's been a wonderful revolution in the last couple of years of seeing more and more clinics coming on board with opening their doors um, to the LGBTQAI communities. So uh, You mean here in Hawaii? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Uh, yes. You mean on this island or also on the other islands? Uh, uh, kind of everywhere, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not so much on the outer islands, but there are a few pockets that are opening up, um, but yeah, mm -hmm. more so here in on Oahu. I'm guessing you all had some major hand in that with uh, some f uh, physician training or uh, uh, and, and other types of training? Actually, a lot of it has um, just kind of naturally come about. A physician moved from the Boston area um, to Maui, mm -hmm. and so he has taken um, up a really big leadership role, very passionate about transgender and LGBTQI medicine. So naturally, some people are moving into Hawaii. Of course, we end up meeting them at different conferences and then working together and kind of trying to uh, connect our resources and also broaden them so there are more opportunities with more providers on more islands every day. And so you've had, uh, what kind of forum would you gather together and to share this information? Is it just like a family medicine uh, forum? Or? Um, various different um, conferences that go on, like the mm -hmm. Department of Education had some conferences that we've met people at, um, youth conferences, um, HIV conferences. That's There's the just... main one, the Hawaii to Zero uh, HIV initiative. Hawaii to z zero. Yes. Okay. H H2O. Okay, okay, H2O. And getting Hawaii to zero new HIV cases diagnosed in one year is the goal. And so by utilizing more and more practitioners, more uh, and better statistical analysis, getting more health care friendly information out there, that's the goal. Okay, so you're working with the HHRC, -H -H right? The Hawaii Health oh. and Harm Reduction Center, yes. which was a, a combination of the Child Project and uh, Life Foundation. the Life Foundation. Yes. yes. Uh, and how many cases are we looking at uh, just for HIV getting down from what is that now to zero? What would that be if? So um, in last year there were about 112 cases, but um, this year that is much lower. So we're not sure, of course, till the end of the year. Okay. But with the new uh, prevention efforts with PrEP as well as different um, informational um kicks and condom use, other things uh, educationally that are filtering out, it seems like that's also helping quite a bit. Well, and that's it, isn't it? It's education and outreach, and we have a, a real uh, shortage of information on, on <clears throat> I think, just good uh, personal care and knowing even how, how, you know, when we don't have things like, and some people say, oh, we shouldn't have needle exchange because that's just encouraging. Well, you know, I mean, What's what's the what are we doing here? We're looking for harm reduction, right. but more importantly, we're looking for vibrant health and health, emotional, 
physical, spiritual, I would say spiritual health on a fundamental level. So what started, when did you start the Lavender Clinic? Um, what's it's been its, uh, its, its trajectory since you started and, and where are you at right now? Um, well, right now, so right now we're kind of the combined center and clinic. And so um, it's actually, it's two organizations that have partnered up. Partnered up. Um, so initially, um, Hawk Health, um, which is now the Lavender Center, um, part of it, uh, started about six to seven years ago. Okay. Um, I moved here after residency and uh, hung out a shingle, and I was a one-man operation for about a year and a half. Okay. Doing all my own referrals and claims and all that fun stuff. Yes. Um, which I don't recommend because it's not <laughs> fun. Um, but um, and uh, it's just it's just exploded from there. It's just. Um, you know, I, I, when I moved here after residency, I looked for opportunities at other clinics. But the idea of getting to spend five to ten minutes with a patient did not feel like quality medicine. No. And I refused to practice that way. So I hung out a shingle and I said, well, we'll just see what happens. And so we have long appointments. We have 30 to 45 minute appointments. We meet directly with a provider for the entire time. And it's really about having a dialogue and meeting the person where they're at. Um, and about three years ago, um, we started the, I started the Lavender Clinic um, and contacted my friend here from residency um, to come down and, uh, and help me get this project started. Um, and it's just, it's just been a, a whirlwind of, of um, enjoyment and, and, and yeah. tears and uh, all sorts of emotions. Um, but you know, to see it, to see our services going out to the community and, and to see the impact on the community um, is just it's just um, brings me to tears. It's just so rewarding. So and and, and, it, and it is and it's and it's so important. It's so vital the work that you do that you you're filling this need that that the you know we're we're in a society where maybe doc, traditional doctors really don't even know how to address these issues or address a, 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 a patient population or they may not even be comfortable with it for whatever reasons, or they don't feel any competence in it, it might be yes. even more fundamental where they... they yes, you know. and that's actually the place where Sam and I met. He, his med school was in the desert, so was mine. University of Arizona, I graduated with my doctorate of medicine. Our University and of Arizona then, in Phoenix? And, and no, in Tucson, this that was me. Oh, Tucson, I'm sorry, it's and ASU then, in Phoenix, okay. And I was in Vegas, so okay. I was at Toro University, the osteopathic school. This one was on the MD side and I was on the DO yes. side. Okay. And then we met in Anchorage, Alaska okay. for residency in the same year. Yes. We're in the same class, don't know anybody yep. out here, up here from the desert. I was the one that wore scarves and all year long in the hospital because okay. I was freezing. He saw this on me and he said, what is that? And I've had this rainbow caduceus since I started med school. And the caduceus are the two the, snakes that are yes, together. the okay. symbol for medicine okay. with the rainbow on them. Oh. Because everybody deserves access to care. Yes. Every single person. Yes. And it's not that difficult. Yes, it takes a little bit more time. Yes, it takes a little bit more training, but everyone is human. And you start from that point and you check the lungs and the heart and you check all of those things and then you move outward. Mm -hmm. And it's just for some reason we get stuck on this, oh, mm, oh, we're this Victorian society. We can't talk about that even as a medical doctor and mm -hmm. it gets um, really difficult. Yes. And during our training in um, residency, we received none additional training. All the stuff that we've done has been because we sought it out. Self-study. Yeah. Yes, self-study. Self-rotations, rotations mm -hmm. that we've chosen um, right. to do and just self-study and mm -hmm. what we wanted to pursue. So, so. You, you both went to residency <coughs> at like uh, Anchorage Hospital or uh, the University the, of Anchorage? Yep, in Anchorage, yep. Alaska Family Medicine Residency Program. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I completed eight months of a 12 months residency. Okay. I, I got ill and had to uh, withdraw at that time. So with those four months left, we certainly have been working towards licensure for me. Haven't found the door yet, but we're not giving up. No. And in the meantime, I'm working with Dr. Hawk as a postdoctoral student, okay. as well as being clinical director and Oh my goodness. You, you do all our professional <laughs> liaisons and, and professional and conferences yes. and yes. But my one of my most favorite things that I get to do, and I'm really honored with that, is I get to go out and present um, educational um, talks. So people will ask us to come, and so um, me along with our other staff and other people to represent the community come with me, and we educate people on how to um, have your place be a little more LGBTQIA friendly. How do you approach the population? How can you be kind 
when you have to use your EHR, when you have to put your legal name here, when you have to do this, have to do that, how can you structure your day to honor the person? So, uh, really important, and, and not just for, for LGBTQI folks, but for all <laughs> folks. And I think physicians are just Everybody. feeling the crush, and probably why we got a huge shortage. What, what's an EHR? I, I don't know. That. Oh, electronic health record. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. so, uh, well, so we, we, yeah, we, it's only been like just this last year or two that we've seen EHRs now come out with being able to choose something besides male and female for gender really? and, and a place to put preferred names. So yes. for years oh, wow. we've had to have it somewhere else and so our staff has had to look it, it for notes. stuff to know, to know how to interact with a, a patient that's calling or so forth. And so now the EHRs are finally coming online to, to put the appropriate gender markers on and for names on the HRs. to reality, and that's a nationwide yeah. platform. Yeah, yes. and we would understand that as uh, 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 what's the, the we call it that's the privacy policy that the masses would understand it as uh, HIPAA? HIPAA. HIPAA. Yes, yep. it's kind of a HIPAA thing uh, at the same time, but your end of the HIPAA thing, maybe. Uh, well, we because for insurance, yeah. it has to be billed under legal name or whatever, okay. right? So, how, whoever you are, however you present your legal status, may not represent that in any way, shape, or form. Right. And so when you come to us, we're honoring you as who you are, yeah. not what it says on the form. So, so important. And we've just come out of a fabulous pride here. Um, so, and when we talk about the community, did you start out this the Lavender Clinic with an intention to serve the LGBTQIA community? Um, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, because when I was um, um, in primary practice by myself, and um, and I was reaching out to um, to the community of like what services you need, what services do we have, what's lacking, where where can I help fill in, um, and um, and that's and that's what that's what born the Lavender Clinic was was talking to all of my patients coming in and being like, what can I do, what kind of services do you need, what what how can I help, and and then also reaching out to community members of seeing who has what and what services um, to try to fill in some gaps. So you're right now. How how many? How large is your is your total staff that you've got? Um, about twenty six. It's a lot. Somewhere around there. Okay, so between, the both, so, between both of them, yeah. And some of, some people are adjunct, or uh, that's not the proper term, but um, part time. Part time, mm -hmm. and they come and they do different services. Maybe it's mm -hmm. uh, counseling services or uh, group work facilitation and that sort of thing. Yes. Uh, can you explain to the masses who may not understand? Because I was watching a fantastic show on Netflix with Katie Couric on a National Geographic special about um, a LGBTQIA population. And Katie was, she was just a great American going, a human being saying, I'm, I don't really understand it. Can you help me understand this? And walked people through a really well done journey. I recommend it to everybody out there. Look at Netflix, Katie Couric. National Geographic, uh, trans <laughs> something, just type that in, it'll pop up. And it was 2016, I believe, or 2017. Very recent, very trendy, timely. Um, what does LGBTIAQ plus mean? Well, I mean, certainly each letter stands for something, but, but really, I mean, it's unfortunate that we have to even have a designation. Like, why can't we just be a community of people? Yes. Instead of having to make, and, and unfortunately, we, you know, we're still at this point where we're having to make these designations because there's, there's still underrepresented communities or, or communities that are still being discriminated against. So I'm hoping at some point we can just be like, hey, we're all in this together. We don't need a letter. Um, but until then, um, it's, it's, um, it's, you know, all the letters include sexual orientation differences. It includes gender differences and the fluidity um, and the spectrums that go with that. Um, which I have to say, that was one of the things that kind of blew me away a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, got that, you got no that problem. One. Yes. Transgender, okay, kind of yes. got that. All right, you can switch that. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, intersex also makes sense. You yeah. may have different genitalia, different medical parts. Totally yeah. got it. But then this gender. Gender non-binary thing. Yes, what do you mean? There's something in between. There's there's anything. <laughs> the fluidity. You can yes. actually choose something. You yeah. can be who you are. That's not one box or another. Yeah. And that could be anything, and you can express that anything. Yes. That was an amazing thought to me. And, and I think it's especially true for the younger the people today. Oh, and, and the freedom, oh, yeah. the freedom with that, because. You know, 20 years ago, dealing with transitioning then, back at the old Harry Benjamin standards that were very strict if you were going to transition, 
Very um, different today. to what we have now, which is the World um, Professional Association for Transgender Health, called the WPATH. It's an international council that puts together some guidelines. And, and I think the millennials really help with this movement of non-binary, which is, which is so amazing. Maybe they're, that, they're, that, they're leading the way. Right. Absolutely. Because like 20 years ago, you had to pick a, you had to pick a box. You were forced into yeah. one or the other. And, um, and so some people were forced into having surgeries or hormones when, they, when maybe they didn't want both. Maybe they just wanted hormones or just surgery, or maybe they wanted neither and just transition legally. There's so many different options, but back then it was, there was more of a forced direction. And I think we're seeing that, that freedom break out here. And it's a subject that I would like to pick up after our break. We do take okay. a short break here. And uh, as you can see, it's a very a topic that, that you may not have ever heard about before. Maybe you do know about it, and you're happy to finally have someone talk about it here on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Winston Welch, and delighted to have Renee Rumler and Sam Hawk of the Lavender Center and Clinic, which is uh, lavenderclinic.org? No, nope, it's, uh, we, so we have a new website. Okay. It's um, Lavender Center and Clinic, all spelled out, okay. dot org. Lavender Center and Clinic, all spelled out, dot org. Yep. Okay, yes. we'll be back in a minute here to more, with more on the show. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on Think Tech. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Okay, welcome back. I'm Winston Welch, and this is Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series. We are talking with Sam Hawk and Renee Rumler of the Rumler of the Lavender Center and Clinic. And again, welcome back, and thank you for being here at this, you know, really important topic and timely too, because you know we're our, our national scene is kind of crazy with even um, the president deciding that trans folks don't exist and, and you know intersex doesn't exist because you know he's a great scientist and probably a lot of people are thinking too like well you know it's like Katie Kirk said one of the people said I don't let my my children decide what they're gonna have for dinner and here this one lady was letting her child say mom I'm really an opposite gender or I'm neither gender or, or, or something and 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 that, that, that journey was so interesting and, and real. And so I encourage people, if they want more information about this, oh, do self-study, like with everything. But that Katie Couric show makes it easily digestible. It's something you could show your parents, um, you know. Right. Um, but I think that also speaks to how fundamental of an identity this is. It's not about picking socks. Uh -huh. It's not about wearing a tiara one day. It's about a true, deep, internal sense of who you are. And it's been in every culture throughout recorded history. Multiple species. Throughout times humans. as well. Yep. So there, it's, it's a very, uh, we don't have the genetic testing right now. We don't have the capability. I think someday we may. Mm -hmm. But there already is MRI evidence that the brains of people who are transgender actually match their preferred gender mm -hmm. more closely than their sex assigned at birth gender. Mm -hmm. So the function in the MRI of the brain shows that. So while there's not one test, you're not gonna get a blood test and be like, yep, here you are, here's your spectrum code, here you go. That isn't how that works. Mm -hmm. But there is evidence that it is a real thing throughout time. And, and NIH is actually, um, I think Dean Hammer did a lecture on it on NI and NIH about... Uh, a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, yes, it right. was a couple of years ago, absolutely. Yes. Just, I mean, just about mentioning that NIH was starting to show that there's a genetic disposition of what your gender is, yep. that, that we are wired a specific gender, and what, how our body turns out can be a crapshoot. Or as we were saying earlier, maybe it's not one or the other, but it's both right. and or neither. Exactly. It's, it's right. this concept, like right. you were saying, it blew your mind. And 
and even for, for those of us of a certain age, you know, the idea that you were gay was hard enough, right? I mean, it's, it, it, and we could still be fired, of course, for being gay or, or lesbian or transgender in half the states in the nation. So this is not ancient history. This is right now. I don't like you because I, I, you don't even have to be gay. I can just think you're gay. You're, <laughs> right. you, you, you act too gay yes. or you're too butch or whatever, so you're fired. And that's, that's legal in our nation right now. So folks, yeah, for, if you didn't know that, it is true. Go ahead and, and, and Google it. And, and, and even if there isn't any biological basis, even if we end up yeah. whatever, it's, this is a movement about compassion and kindness to, to, to everyone around us. You know, regardless of their gender identity, regardless yeah. of their sexual orientation, regardless of whatever, their eye yeah. color, their hair statue, their cultural yeah. background. Yeah. This is just another thing for us to like be able to like, hey, yeah. let, let's, let's, let's find some love here. Let's, it, it, let's find some love. Let's, <laughs> yes. let's embrace our full humanity. And if my full humanity says I am this or that or the other or none of the above, I want to be respected and loved just for that human being that I am. Right. And that allows me to bring my full self to the table because when I have to say, oh, no, you're not this, you're that, it's like even the healthcare records. When you, we couldn't Absolutely. use our preferred name or even a preferred pronoun, and I, you know, I've, I've, I'm starting to see this actually in conferences that I go to. My name, Winston. My uh, pronouns are he, him, his. And I think that's important. And it's, up to the, all of us to respect the other individuals rather than the other way around because we don't realize how hard it is for someone in those other shoes and when we can put ourselves even in a simple pronoun placement where someone might, be, might prefer a pronoun of they, they, them, theirs as a singular pronoun, then we can realize, wow, this is really different and, and have some sympathy uh, for, uh, for our fellow humans. And I think that's been one of our challenges medically as well, is because most medical places are very, we have to be very formal. We have to meet this standard, that standard, this standard, which we meet all of those standards, of course, because you have to. But also you can do it in a way that is connected humanly. Yes. And that's one of the things that we strive to do in our clinic, is actually talk to the person and find out what your wellness goals are. Yours won't be the same as mine. And so that individual goal of not just, like you said, basic health, but actual like exceptional wellness is a really different philosophy that I love uh, that Dr. Hawk has supported all of his practitioners in really supporting and finding. And, and of course, the LGBTQIA and the IA, maybe people don't, or Q, I mean, queer or questioning, mm -hmm. and I is intersex, and A is maybe A, a gender or allies, or allies, and, and plus, and that's why I love you say all communities and all genders, because like you said, it, it's going to get more and more letters. And let's, let's, just, and let's, let's just embrace everyone. Let's embrace that's everyone. What, that's what our right? role is. Yeah. But, we, but we do have a historically um, underserved and non-served um, community inside of this with our letters as we're dealing with right now. Oh, right. Yes. And, yes. and we're, we're, we, we see staggering rates of, um, I think, mental health issues because of the, the intense rejection and difficulties that we have in society. So people can come to a place like your clinic and not only get the mental, uh, the physical support that they might need, but the mental support as well and the, the social support. So tell us about a little of, of those, of those um, services that you offer like that that might go beyond the medical. Either one can take. Oh, okay. so, go ahead. <laughs> so uh, for we do have groups. They're okay. all free. Yep. Uh, we have right now trans feminine, trans masculine adult. We also have um, transgender teenagers and a group for all people who identify as something not straight, basically. Okay. Um, and that those groups meet either um, weekly, biweekly, or monthly, and they're all run by licensed therapists. People come in, they hang out, talk about different things. There are some social activities that have happened. And then there's also the REACH program, which is kind of new. So talk about REACH. Ah, yeah, the REACH program is um, our new youth program that we um, started earlier this year. So we did kind of a pilot run of the, of the program this year and we we'll, um, are planning to launch it um, into kind of full production next year. Um, but it reaches out to, um, to all the youth um, all genders, all orientations. Um, of course, we make sure that the LGBTQAI community is, is, um, feels very safe 
um, um, in this program, as that's our goal to make sure we're very inclusive to that population. And um, it, it goes through um, uh, recreation, healthcare, arts, science, um, education, education, culture, um, <laughs> cultural aspects. There's, I got yes. a cheat sheet here. Yes. <laughs> I, thank you. Yes, that's great. Yeah, and and this it's it's a re it's for a youth program. And what does youth mean um, in in this in this in these terms here? Is this for thirteen to eighteen or or six to thirteen or? Yeah, it's or, like 12, 12 to eighteen. Twelve to eighteen. Because yep. what I was seeing on the Katie Couric show was that very young children know, and they're telling their parents, and maybe we always did, and we said, Mom, I feel like. You know, a girl when you know you were assigned male at birth, um, which we call uh, what do we call it when we're assigned male at birth? That was our uh, sex assigned at birth male. Okay, sex assigned at birth male, but we feel differently. And then the parents now, enlightened parents, are saying, you know, when my child is coming to me and saying okay. these things and having real issues with this, this is not a just a you know, uh, uh, I want to dress up as a girl, uh, you know, and when right. you're three years old, this is when you're seven and you say, I I'm a girl on the inside, but yes. you know, you're outside as a boy and I want to be called Mary, but my name is Thomas, you know, mm -hmm. and you're really understanding this. And at the, in this day and age, the kids can go on the internet and say, that okay. is me. And the interesting thing was it said millions of Americans are suddenly, it's double the number of what it was five years ago. And obviously this is not just suddenly something in the water. Right. It's just something that we're, we're feeling like we can be more open and well, out. Well, there's, there's, there at least was starting to be a safer uh, feeling to be able to come out with that, of yes. course, until a recent administration. But, um, you know, there, we're, there's still more and more coming out. And, 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 you know, and studies have shown over and over again how harmful it is um, to youth and adults to suppress who you are, yeah. um, regardless of what, what that is. Um, and, and, and so I see, we see I, so I do most of the youth um, yep. uh, that come in for, um, in, the, the, the trans, in the transgender community. And so I sit down and have long conversations with the parents, with the youth, mm -hmm. and um, find out where we're all at, where we're, all, where we're going with things and stuff. And, and um, I almost always cry in all those meetings, because it's just, yeah. one, it's just, um, it's so great that parents even even show up because yeah. there's still so many LGBT QAI youth, um, and particularly the trans youth that that are kicked out of homes and are homeless. Yes. Um, and so it's still heartbreaking. So when I see parents come in, I'm, I'm just like, thank you, thank you for showing up, regardless of what you end up doing. You you came here today for some education and to try to help your child. And and that's so important. And these are these are by and large millennial parents that are coming in now. I'm get or older millennials. Right. And they're realizing, yeah, I don't want to be part of a, a suppressing my child. I I need to respect and honor my child and love my child for who that child is. Well, I think is. they also see the suicide rates. Yes, that's... One in two. I mean, that's like 50%. And we it's, are, that is unacceptable. We are getting rid of that. It's and unacceptable. You, it are really part, is. you are absolutely <laughs> part of that solution. Your, your clinic, your center, it's vital. So obviously a lot of people are going to be touched by this. They're going to share this with their friends and family and say, hey, this is, might be your kid or this might be your brother or whatever. So where can they go for more information to find out about this? Um, it's at the Lavender Center and Clinic, and it's, and, the, and it's on screen, okay, right there? Yes. Yep. Lavender Center and Clinic, all spelled out. Dot com or org dot org dot org. We, okay. we have both. We have both. Whichever okay. you dot want to put. Yeah, all, all works there. Um, you know, we have so many more things that I would love for you to come back and talk about again. Some of the specific programs, and uh, you know, we're always out of time. But I just wanted to really thank you, and and um, I, I just so respect the work that you do as human beings, just bringing some love and light to to all of us and especially in this time like you're superstars and so uh you know really thank you thank you so much and thank you for coming on my thank show you, today. thank you thank you so much for so i look us. forward to coming you guys coming back again in the future absolutely okay yeah. okay absolutely. okay <laughs> and we'll, we'll discuss more of this and as you can see this has been a very important discussion uh and show of out and about on think tech hawaii and it just underscores that we're all humans we're all on this journey together we need to love we need to love some more. So if you've got people that are LGBTQIA, love them. If they need some support, 
send them over to the Laver Center and Clinic and love them yourself. So until next time, uh, I'm afraid we are out of time. We've been talking with Sam Hawk and Renee Rumler of the Lavender Center and Clinic. Hope you have been inspired like I have with this amazing um, duo and the work and that they and their staff do for us in our community. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for Robert McLean, our great uh, broadcast engineer, and Eric Kalander, who has been our floor manager today. I'll see you in two weeks on Out and About. Aloha.